And here we are again. Our content objective hasn't changed. We're still all about the ins and outs of the nitrogen cycle. Our letter of the day is still the letter N. And in, the la in part one of this uh, little series, uh, we, were, we did a spin through the nitrogen cycle, which is uh, fairly complicated. And so what I want to do now is give you a tool for how you're going to actually keep all that straight. And it's our first mnemonic. It's called Fix, Nad, and Pan. Fix, Nad, and Pan with a double A there. And so what I'd recommend that you do is set up your paper with the process on one side, product on the other side, and I'm going to show you how this works. And I think it'll be a good tool for you. And so fix is for fixation. Nitrogen fixation happens. It's a process, and it turns, uh, it creates ammonia, and so that's the product. That ammonia gets you converted by bacteria through a process called nitrification into nitrites and nitrates product. Once it's there, the plant sucks it up in this process called assimilation. I didn't mention that in the last, in part one, but it's a word you want to know. Uh, for all you Star Trekkies out there, maybe you already know it. That's where I first, first learned at Star Trek. But essentially what it is, is uh, the plants are sucking up that nitrate, and they're undoing it and taking that nitrogen to make amino acids, and they're making proteins, and basically making, incorporating it into their body. They're assimilating it, and the proteins are the product of that. And now it's in the food chain, and so there it goes until it comes out of the food chain by either being defecated or maybe something dies, and now it's being decomposed. And it takes those uh, proteins and amino acids and turns it back into ammonia. So ammonification is the process, ammonia is the product. So that's an easy one to remember because they sound the same. And then finally, nitrates, nitrites, ammonia. Um, can be turned back into nitrogen gas through denitrification. And then the end product is going to be nitrogen gas. And then it can start all over again. So fix NAD and PAN. You can write it in the margin of your paper, or like when you're on an exam, like, oh gosh, how do I do that? And so hopefully this first letter that lines up triggers the, uh, the, the, the name of the process for you. But if you do it, you got to make sure you line it up right, or it won't work. So uh, moving on from there, if there's anything more important than memorizing the nitrogen cycle, uh, I think it's just really understanding humans' involvement in it and what, what kind of impact that has. And so I want to tell a little story about this guy named Francis Haber. And so uh, for the longest time throughout human history, we've been doing agriculture for 10,000 years. We were fully committed to agriculture, but we've been relying on bacteria uh, and lightning to convert the nitrogen gas into ammonia, which is the first step in, in really getting it to the plants. Uh, and that ha has made nitrogen really a limiting factor in, in fueling the human population. And so people are going hungry. And if you think about what happens on a farm, we grow the plants, then we take the plants typically, and, and in the plants are the nutrients that were in the soil, and we take them off the farm and eat them somewhere else, and then over time the soil becomes deficient in nutrients, and that's a problem, right? And so. Uh, to grow more food, we needed some kind of way to put that nutri nutrients back into the soil. And so here comes the, uh, Francis Haber. And what he did was he invented the way to, to do this, to, to, to get around lightning. And it involved using lots of natural gas. And so here's like a little diagram of the process, where basically you need huge amounts of energy to get that nitrogen and hydrogen to turn into ammonia, like lightning uh, amounts of energy. And so he did it with uh, natural gas, and he figured it out. And even though maybe some of you haven't heard of Francis Haber, and, oh, and then Bosch came in, he just basically commercialized the whole thing. So they call it the Haber-Bosch process. These two guys won uh, Nobel Peace Prizes for this, and people say it's the most important invention in the history of humanity, what these guys did. I was thinking like iPod or wah-wah pedal for the guitar or something like that, but the, it's actually the making of fertilizer. And so uh, what makes the story interesting is that Francis Haber wasn't such a good guy, and so he w w lived in Germany and became a Nazi. Uh, and was in the, the other thing about fertilizers and ammonia is it's explosive. There's a big explosion, uh, uh, explosion at a, a natural uh, ammonia plant uh, last year in Texas. I don't know if you remember that. Huge. But so it's an explosive, and so you can use this stuff for, for making bombs. And so he got hook, uh, like hooked into the, the Nazi party. And it's World War II, and the Nazis were getting their, their ammunition and their nitrates and, and ammonia from Chile, but they eventually they got cut off from Chile. They couldn't get any, you know, get that support. So Francis Haber started making it within, you know, in Germany to, to fuel the war effort. 
uh, and his wife was so torn up just about just the, the awfulness of just the whole thing. She ended up uh, killing herself, committing suicide. And then when the Nazis lost the war, Francis Haber got run out of town or was expelled and really died just kind of a nobody, like a broken individual, despite the fact that he had the greatest invention in the history of humanity and won a Nobel Peace Prize. Kind of interesting. And so... Uh, after World War II, we had all this stuff too. Like we had all, it actually was munitions and like all these, you know, bomb making factories because because we were in the war too. And so now we got all this extra nitrogen. What are we going to do with it? And that was when fertilizers really hit the farm. Um, and by, by the way, if you go into a hardware store and buy some, a bunch of bags of fertilizer, they'll keep an eye on you. They'll be like, why do you need so much fertilizer? Because it is part of making a bomb. Um, but what we did was right after the war, we're like, okay, let's dismantle the bombs and we're going to put them on the farms. Kind of interesting. And so here comes the fertilizers in huge quantities as it's taking over. So here's a graph of just fertilizers on farms. And here's where it was invented, Haber-Bosch. And then now here around the end of World War II is when it really takes off. Here's worldwide. So we're using tons of this stuff. And it's interesting to note that we have really... Um, we're relying on fossil fuels now. And so they say that it takes 10 calories of fossil fuel to make one calorie of food. So that's not a good ratio, right? That's not going to last. And so what we've really done is we've taken a system that used to depend on the sun to convert uh, food calories, to make food calories, and now we do it with fossil fuels. Um, not so sustainable. The other thing that we want to know about this is that farmers, you know, why wouldn't you go big on fertilizer? It's like if you go small on fertilizer, maybe you don't use enough and you, you don't grow as much food. So you're going to use a little extra as an insurance policy. And so we got a lot of people that are just, you know, habitually over fertilizing and then it rains. And then here comes another environmental problem. Besides groundwater contamination and blue baby syndrome, it can get into the groundwater, people drink it, and then it causes problems, you know, where uh, it can, uh, really bad health problems. Um, but environmentally, uh, you get this runoff going, and here's another diagram of it, where it's just kind of hitting those waterways, and eventually it makes its way to where the water's not moving so fast, a pond, a lake, a bay, and you get, get a, an algae bloom. And uh, it's classic eutrophication, which we'll study more. You're reading about it now in Chapter 5, but essentially you've got algae that is just all of a sudden being st growth is stimulated. It goes crazy, exponential growth, J-curve. And then uh, these single-celled creatures don't make it very long, and so and then they collapse and die. Now you've got all this dead organic waste, and then the deco decomposers come in, do cellular respiration, and then now you got the oxygen levels dropping, and it becomes a hypoxic situation where you get like a dead zone, like in the Gulf of Mexico, and they're they're actually scattered around the world, and so it has a huge impact on just ecosystems and also like the fishing industry uh, as well. And so economic impacts in addition. And so I hope that was interesting for you guys. Uh, I'm going to recommend going back to uh, one of these nitrogen cycles and just hitting pause and seeing if you can figure it out. See if you can get that fixed nad and pan going. Uh, and then also go back and do a nice summary on your Cornell notes. I'm a, I'm a believer in that. And here's some questions on the side there too. I hope you found this interesting and we'll see you next time. Take it easy.